So uh, based on the graphic that, that I made earlier, we need to start to make these screens. Well, we've got all the infrastructure now. We've got the starting point um, uh, library, so it's time to start to make these files, or these screens, that is, in this one file. So uh, we're going to use, I'm going to delete that H1. Uh, we're going to start to use comments uh, because we want to delineate that uh, we've got a we've got that first uh, uh, welcome screen, and the way I'm going to do this is comments. Um, we may have one or one hundred lines of code that make up a particular screen, <clears throat> and as we build up all of these, we have about two hundred and sixty lines of HTML that we'll eventually create. We have about 100 lines of CSS that we'll eventually create. We have about 725 lines of JavaScript that we'll create. So creating or adding these comments in the right spot helps you at a glance as you're browsing your code find the right spot. Well I called it welcome screen start because the code of the welcome screen will, ex will exist here. And then of course <coughs> eventually the code of the welcome screen will end. So welcome screen end. And because it's a comment, it's a different color. It's usually a radically different color than the rest of your code. So as we're browsing through eventually our 260 lines of HTML, maybe very then very quickly then I can zoom in and hone in on the exact uh, part of the code I need to. So welcome screen starts here. <coughs> this is going to be a section. We saw previously that we can make screens of content when they are sections. But we can't simply use section. We have to upgrade them via jQuery Mobile. So what else do, does a section need? What was that? Data role. Data role, data role, page. Section then gets upgraded with a data role attribute of page. We already know we are eventually going to link from screen to screen. They needed a unique ID. So I'm going to call this PG Welcome. I'm going to keep it very simple in terms of a page or a screen of content. Welcome. This, of course, can be called SC Welcome for section welcome or you know s uh, screen welcome or, or whatever these names are arbitrary it whatever it's whatever that makes sense to you um, but we'll go with this so PG welcome um, the first thing that I want to show here in the welcome screen is the name of the app and then the options for the person to log in or sign up so we're going to create a header area. The header, of course, is everything at the top most area of the screen. We need to upgrade that data role header. There was a way for us to, specifically with the footer, Maybe not so obvious with the header, but works with header or footer. Remember when we made the footer and we stuck the footer exactly at the bottom of the screen with an extra attribute? Anyone remember that attribute? It was, it was the value of fixed, but it was the attribute of data position fixed. So the value is fixed, but the attribute is data position. Now that, that made a lot of sense for um, a footer because depending on the amount of content on the screen, and imagine this, this is a tablet, roughly a tablet size, right? Um, if I only had you know, half of the screen full of content without fixed, <coughs> without fixed, the footer would be right there, right at the end of the content. I always want the footer always at the bottom, so data position fixed. With header, we hadn't really experienced it yet, but without fix, what would have happened is if there was content that we could scroll up, the header would have actually scrolled away. So whatever was at the top and more stuff scroll up, the header would scroll away. 
I don't want that. I want the header to always be visible. So data position fixed also fixes it always at the top. Data position fixed always fixes the footer at the bottom. And what I want to display at the very top here, H1, I want that to also say CBDB, the comic book database. Title up here only matters when it's a web page because our web browser at the top of the screen in the tab will display the title. But eventually when we get to a device, there is no tab in our app. It's the full screen. So whatever, technically, whatever we write up here in the title doesn't really matter eventually because it will never be shown when it's a real app. So I've got it here redundant in two places, and that's fine. And we know this because title will not appear in the app, but it will on a website. So definitely we display that there. And again, just to make sure this is on the right track, it's not that much more we've written, but you want to take a quick look in the browser. If, um, if it's supposed to be looking how I expect so far. You have to make sure you got header, data role, header. So we've got this first section where I want a header. And on this first section, um, this first screen, this is the welcome screen. So uh, I want to, um, later on, we can put graphics and better colors and such. Uh, that will most likely be one of the <coughs> one, some of the homework. Sometimes the homework will be, I'll lead you up to a certain point, and then you have to take the next step. So uh, this isn't going to be so complex just yet. But the main thing that I want to see here uh, is a sign up or a login button a way to go to the whole sign up procedure or the login procedure. So to keep it simple, we'll create a couple of buttons here. Let's say after header, we need article. Header is the top area of the of the design. Article is the main area. This is the one with the special case that it needs role, not data role, role main, and class UI dash content. Almost everything has some sort of data role. There's a there's a, only one really that has role, not data role. You just have to memorize it. The article is our main content, and its role is main. H2, returning user, H2, new user. In the main area of the app, the person will be able to choose if they're returning or if they're new. Um, as we go out through the whole length of these three months, uh, there, the great thing about programming is that there's so many ways to do it. The bad thing about programming is that there's so many ways to do it. So that means <coughs> that if it's valid and if it works, it works. If the code runs and it works, it, it works. Uh, if there's another way to do it and it works, it works. Um, you know, if someone raises a hand and says, what about this? And if it works, it works. Uh, you know, what? if it works, it works. That's the short answer. So if you'd like to do it in other ways, or if you've learned in different ways in other classes, that's fine, as long as it works, pretty much. So what I'm getting at is that on some apps, you might see that as soon as you see the, the welcome screen, right away there is the login box or another button that says sign up. 
So sometimes there's an app that from that one screen you have those two things you can do right away. We're doing it a little bit of a longer way just to kind of show you the possibilities and then, then of course it can be changed to how you wish. But the point is that under returning user there will be a button that takes you to a screen like I had in the in the graphic a sign up screen and a log and a login screen. So separate screens, separate buttons. A tag to say log in a tag to say sign up the tab these over also just to kind of look at them conceptually both of these are heading twos because they are both in the same level of hierarchy h1 is the biggest most visible thing on the whole screen, H1. Anything besides that then is a subsection. So we've got a section, sort of, of returning users, and we've got a section of new users. They're both equally weighted. They're both H2. If we had, like, returning user forgot password, in that case, perhaps, so don't write this, but perhaps I might have an H3. So don't write this. I'm just saying forgot password. The reason I've got an H3 there, I might have an H3, is because that is a subtopic or a subsection of a returning user. So that's why that's H2, and that's why that's H2. They are the same hierarchy. They have the same meaning or importance. <coughs> okay, so these A tags don't work yet. They don't go anywhere. They don't have any attributes fully filled in. So we need href. PG login. Again, we're going to keep this all simple, but you will have to mind the capital letters and such. This is going to go to a page with a unique ID, login. So I need to do the same thing for sign up. A tag href pound pg sign up. I see on so many tutorials people trying to be really advanced in that they are so esoteric in what they write. For someone that's going to make perfect sense, PSU, of course, that's my page of sign up. But for a lot of other people, what is PSU? I don't know your secret language. So I would recommend especially as a beginner, it's okay to be verbose with these things and spell them out. Maybe you'll eventually develop your own shorthand and such. And I'm often going to be pretty wordy and pretty verbose as time goes on. But if you want to develop your own shortcuts, great. In this class, I'll do it the long way. I see so many tutorials uh, where it's a great result, but then when I try to look at their code, they, they, they name things like TC. <clears throat> what is TC? I have to read the whole thing to understand that that was like type converter. How would I have known that? They should have just typed type converter. Well, of course, some people just want to type quickly shortcuts. They have their own secret language. Great. But then when you're trying to teach or do tutorials, that doesn't help. These are supposed to be buttons. They don't look like buttons. What are we missing? Uh, data. An attribute for data role button. Yes. Let's make each of these look like a button with a data role of button, an attribute of data role with a value of button. Here's where you can copy and paste if it works. I'm assuming mine works. Maybe you shouldn't yours assumes. Maybe you called it date role instead of data role. Maybe you called it data role instead of data role, R-O-L-L -L versus R-O-L-E. We'll want an animation, and we'll want an icon. Animation. That's data-animation, right? Nope, it's data-transition. So we're going to add a transition for our animation. Did anyone spend any time on 
jQueryMobile.com over the weekend. No? No one? Minus 10 points for everyone then. Oh, 10 points for Sophia over here. Minus 10 for everyone else. So data transition. And uh, we'll do flip. I'm going to do a different data transition for sign up. Do slide up. Now, I, I remember saying last week that it's not a good idea to mix so many different transitions. Last week I said that, and I meant it, and it's still in effect. But last week I also meant it in terms of, in that case, it was a nav bar. It was home about contact. All of those three different screens were related in terms of, do you want to go to the home screen, <coughs> the about screen, the contact screen? So all of those animations were the same conceptually. Here, this is two different concepts. One is to log in, one is to sign up. In this case, it's then OK to use a different animation to catch people's attention. I did something different. I see a bunch of buttons. I'm not thinking I tap one. I tap another one. Oh, it animated differently. Let me pay attention. It's very subconscious. It's almost subliminal. It's part of, again, user interface design. I have one kind of animation for one kind of task to log in, and a different animation for a different task. It's the same task to visit home, about, and contact. So it should be the same animation for all three tasks. And finally, an icon, data icon. So for login, data dash icon, I'm going to do um, arrow. arrow R and for sign up we have an icon that can often be used for a login sort of concept which is user here's where you would go to put in your user information your user info, your login info as a user. Let's take a quick look at it in the browser. So it should look something like this. We've got the name of the app at the very top. We've got the button, login, sign up. They're in a section, returning user, new user. Nothing happens if we click these. These pages don't exist yet. That's fine. But you uh, should get some buttons. You should get some icons. These are welcome screen, PG welcome. I don't have this button. I remember, to raise, I remember to raise your hand if you need help, please.
this point, we've got this, uh, this welcome screen, no functionality yet. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bringing up um, debugging tools as the course goes on. Right now this is all HTML, so it's not so much to fix. Debugging is the process of fixing errors in an app. But right now, because we're dealing with the easiest, quote unquote, aspect of the app, HTML, there isn't that much to debug. When we get to JavaScript, that's definitely when you need uh, to, to do debugging. So I'm going to be showing this several times as the course goes on, and I'll show it one, the, for the first time here. I, uh, we actually did see it previously, now that I think about it, but I'll remind you. When we're in the browser, press F12, and depending on the browser, you're going to get some sort of console. This is our, uh, this is our developer's console. And it may help you, as we're writing our code and it doesn't quite work, it may help you to press F12 and look on console, and it may tell you, at the very end over here, go look at line 7. It won't literally say 7. It will say the name of your file, 7. So if you are getting some sort of messages in the console, that might be an error or a warning that is happening that you might want to fix. At the moment, mine seems to be fine. But you know, if I had mistyped <coughs> the name of one of my JavaScript files, you know, obviously it doesn't look right, but then I press F12. Loading failed for the script with source blah blah blah. Oh, I mistyped a JS, line 25. So this debugger, this console here is going to be invaluable when we get to the actual hard parts. All of this is the easy part. CSS is the easy part. When we get to JavaScript, the hard part, we're going to look at this, and this will maybe tell us the error in a human readable way, but it'll definitely try to point to us what line you should go look at. So, remember F12. Um, okay, so the, the project at the moment looks like that. Um, little cosmetic thing, but I want to move this icon to the right of the button. The default is at the left, and I want to move this to the right. Also, here's part of user experience. The, both of those icons at the moment are the same color, same font. The icon is on the same side. It kind of then becomes background noise to the person. One of the principles of, uh, of graphic design and app design visually uh, is alignment. The alignment of things uh, dictates part of its usage. So it's very subtle. But having both of these on the same alignment here, they sort of cancel each other out. You don't, people don't quite notice that. Simply by moving this icon to the right side, it's a different alignment. It stands out to people. They actually look at it for two seconds instead of half a second, like most attention spans. And so we're going to move the icon over to the right to catch their attention that this is a different button than this. Obviously, different words. But we're going to see over and over that as we design our app, of course we know how it works. And we, of course we know how it should work. But you have to then think about in terms of eventually someone's going to use your app that has never used your app before. And how can we make it as easy as possible for them to use it to enjoy it? And a very subtle thing is simply moving the icon to the right. We have a jQuery mobile attribute that will let us move it to the right. So only for the login, I'm also then going to add data dash icon dash POS stands for position not what you think position and we're gonna do right position it to the right this icon position it to the right in this button and the purpose of all of that is that hey brand new user look at this icon it's different than the other one pay attention to it for half a second and understand that this is a different action than the one below it and all of this app stuff happens so fast. Some people that are more tech savvy, they'll pick, your, they'll pick up your app and use it in seconds. Other people might take a little longer. Other people might take a lot longer. And other people might never figure out your app and uninstall it. We have to decide how much of it is your fault and how much of it is their fault. So we try to do as much as possible so that it's not our fault. 
with good user, uh, good user experience and design practices and such. So, oh, sorry, it's icon without a dash. <clears throat> no dash. Icon pass is one word. Sorry about that. Data icon pass. One word. That's on the right side. If your welcome screen worked, we can reuse it for a couple of other screens. It has the basic building blocks for our, for our sign up and our login screen. I only want a header, I don't want a footer. That's just aesthetics, of course. We could put a footer there if we want. I don't want one for this design. You could put it if you want. But this section has the basic pieces that I need for returning user and new user screen. So I want to copy all of the code so far, if it works. If it doesn't work, fix it, and then copy it. But I want to copy the starting of the comment all the way to the end of the comment, everything in between. Copy it and paste it right after itself. And we'll use that as a starting point to create the PG. Uh, we'll do PG sign up first. I'm going to copy lines 10 to 22 or so. And your line numbers may not exactly line up with mine. Uh, that's very common that that happens. So if your line numbers are different than mine, that's OK. But you just have to find, start where your comment starts and where it ends. In my case, it's about 10 to 22. Copy that, and then paste it line 24 or so. And we need to change a few things. This is a no longer welcome screen start. This is no longer welcome screen end. This is no longer ID PG welcome. This is, um, maybe we'll change the H1 and we'll definitely change the article content. So on this brand new section, this is login screen Log in screen start. <clears throat> Log in screen end. Section still data role page, of course, but now ID is PG sign up. I'm sorry, what am I doing here? Yes. Um, Yes, uh, I did want to do sign up, so let's fix the comment, not the ID. Sign up. And it's a comment, so it doesn't matter, but I want to do sign up first. Uh, no one will be able to um, log in unless they've got, a, if they've got an account first, so we should be uh, creating a sign up procedure first. PG sign up. Uh, H1 will say here sign up. And these items in the article, I'll just delete them all. Those buttons that were there for login and sign up, well, they they don't they no longer make sense in the sign up screen. So this is a brand new screen, a brand new section. Sign up section data role sign up. You should be able to save it and test it at this point. 
from the welcome screen you should be able to go to this sign up screen our IDs match new user PG sign up should take you to section PG sign up you should see the animation um, which was slide up it should take you to a brand new screen that all it really should say at the moment is sign up in the header thing to remember here is and it's just the way it is unfortunately we have to remember that when we have href there's the pound sign but then there's no pound sign on the ID you can kind of think that ID means pound sign basically so make sure there's a pound sign in href but no pound sign in ID Let me check mine. I'm in the um, welcome screen. I click sign up. Goes to sign up. Now, if this were on a real device, um, which will eventually be on a real device, Android, iPad, iPhone, if it's on one of those three different devices, only the Android devices have a back button. Default Android devices have a, have a back button at all times, basically. iPads and iPhones don't. They've got the home screen, the home button. So we've got a back button in the browser <coughs> to go back, and a forward button. We cannot assume that any device will have that. You kind of have to look at it like this. All that I can see in my device is that. So if someone comes to sign up right here, I didn't need to sign up, I want to go back. There's no way to go back. Of course, we're not, you know, we've got the back button of the browser, but we're not going to assume there's a back button. So we should always, what I'm getting at is that we should always create a way in the actual viewport, in the actual body, we should create navigation elements. We should not assume that the web browser will be there back and forward, and we should not assume that we're going to be on an Android device which has a back button. Because our app is going to be universal. It's going to work on all devices. And iPhone, iOS devices don't have a back button. So there's actually a very easy way to add a simple back button um, up, on the, up on the header of a screen. In our sign up section, in the header, data role header, data position fixed, one more attribute. This one's a funny one. Data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. This has a very specific purpose. It adds a back button to the header where it is automatically programmed to take you back, take the user back one point in history to the previous screen. <clears throat> so this is going to cause uh, some problem for some people, and I'll, and I'll explain why. So I'm going to test mine. I'm going to save it and run it. I'm going to go from welcome to sign up. I get a back button. Great. Here's where the problem is going to happen for some of you. You're going to be in your web browser. You're going to press refresh. Where's my back button? The teachers worked, but mine didn't. There is no history when I refresh from here. So there's no nothing to go back to. You should be refreshing from the home screen. Then when you go to sign up, back button. If you try to refresh with from within this screen, back button don't, doesn't appear because there's no history. That's why when I am testing it in the class, I'm doing the shortcut here. I'm actually doing a keyboard shortcut. 
Control Alt Shift X. It really rolls off the tongue. <clears throat> but once you memorize that, which you can do with one hand if you have the skills, or Chrome or Internet Explorer, if you run the keyboard shortcut that way, you know it will automatically appear in the the latest version. When whenever you start refreshing and you're not on the home screen, there's a little bit of weird behavior. That's obviously not a bug or anything. That's just a quirk that it's refreshing from whatever screen you're in and therefore some things like back button won't work because it's based on history but when you refresh there's no history sort of so if you memorize some of these shortcuts and so many of these menus if you never realize save as is control alt s close is control w control n a lot of us know that new file control z or command z undo there's shortcuts for opening in the browser and that's what I've been doing all along so I recommend to try to learn as many of these shortcuts as possible because moving your hand from here to here and clicking here and clicking here that takes up a few seconds but all of those seconds add up to minutes and wasted time and productivity it's safe to do control alt shift and then X no one can hit all four at the exact same time, so you can do Control Alt Shift and then X. Yeah. So then you do all four, and then you get the browser. So sign up. Didn't mean to go there. I meant to log in. So there's back. That icon, of course, can be changed, but the default is that it'll say the word back. It'll give the automatic carrot L but all of that can be changed of course if we go look up the documentation and figure out how to change it it's fine for us at the moment and notice the animation sign up does a slide up to catch your attention back is slide down login will be flip <coughs> we're not there yet but then that's a that's a slide up that's a slide down it's a different kind of animation to catch the attention if it doesn't slide, you misspelled it. Uh, I don't know how you would misspell slide up, but you, it's possible. So that sign up screen is going to have a whole procedure for creating an account. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Let's create the. Uh, login screen um, it's probably here's a super advanced trick no one knows this if you copy something in the with the in the in the into the clipboard if you do control C it stays there until you copy something else so I copied something else and it replaced anticlimactic it was supposed to paste in what I had previously, but I did copy something else. In. It might still be in your memory if you try to paste. Uh, but I might as well, if, if you're trying to save time, you might as well copy the sign-up screen. That's as much as we need here. I'm going to be removing anyway this you know, returning user and new user stuff if you copied the welcome screen. So the sign-up screen is basic enough for me to reuse that. Um, for a brand new login section. <clears throat> so I'm going to copy from the start of the comment to the end of the comment my PG sign up, which is approximately lines 24 to 33. Paste that into line 35. And what I need to change instead of sign up, login screen, start, login screen end, ID PG login, H1 login. I'm going to leave the data add back button because then there's that option. I wanted to log in. Whoops, I need an account. I can go back. We could set up a way that from this screen to also help the person and tell them, don't have an account yet? Click here. 
and then that will further take them back over to PG sign up. You want to give that a quick test. It should work if you've got your IDs correct. I, I think I mentioned this last time, but it's very help, helpful for you to do this. If you double click something like this ID, which is just selecting the, the word. here, That's a shortcut there. Some people, you can click and drag and make a selection. But in a lot of programming apps, if you double click a word, it will select the word quickly. If you triple click, it often selects the whole line. So instead of dragging all the way across here, and whoops, I missed, I went too far, you can triple click a line, and that often selects the whole line. And I'll remind you of these things as we do them. There's a lot of shortcuts, and um, this is one of them. Double click one word to select the one word. Triple click one word to select the whole line. I don't think there's a quadruple click. No. So triple click selects one whole line, double click one word. Anyway, what I'm saying is, if you double click to select this one word here, it should highlight it as well as any other instances throughout your code. And that's helpful to see if you spelled it right. Because if you wrote login right here, but you wrote login right there, those two should have highlighted. Oh, I see. I misspelled login here. That's why it did not highlight up there. So it's like quick tests and quick debugging. I expect that I can get to this screen because I clicked on a button. That button has the same ID as this ID. So it <coughs> should work in theory. That still doesn't fully protect you because if you didn't put a pound sign up there, that's the same, that's the same, it doesn't work. I forgot the pound sign. So it doesn't fully you know, protect you from those sorts of things, but I find it so useful when, I, when people ask me for help to simply, let's select that ID in question. It didn't highlight elsewhere. Oh, we see the misspelling. So there's no debugger just yet that will tell us, you misspelled line 7. You put L-O-G-G -G instead of L-O-G. There's nothing that smart yet. And we would think, well, after, you know, 50 years of programming, these things can't tell us what the error is. These, sometimes these things are not as simple as simply typing the wrong letter. You, you have syntax errors and you have logic errors. And the logic errors are the even harder ones to figure out. <coughs> Let's see if mine works here. I have login, flip animation, takes me to login, back button, unflip. Yes. On you added slide down on okay to the back button we need to um, this is sort of like a prepackaged icon text and animation I would have to look up how to re how to override it but we would be able to override it so it's a different animation. I wouldn't recommend to do it because, again, it's going to break people's expectations. If it slid up for a certain task, it should slide back down for the opposite. If we then make it do a different kind of animation, subtly and subconsciously, it seems like something else happened, so that might confuse people. But we'll have to look it up. I'll have to look it up to tell you how to override that, but it's possible. Let's see. So at my point right here, um, eventually, when a person logs, when a person uh, creates an account uh, from the sign up, it will it will let them it will take them over to to log in, and then when they've logged in, it'll take them to the to the home screen. 
So while we're here, let's create one more basic screen, one more basic skeleton of a screen, the home screen. Now at this point, I believe I still have copied into memory. And now if I paste, yep, so it's still in memory. That's what I'm trying to say. Things that you copy stay in the memory until you copy something else. I hadn't copied anything else after I did all of that typing, so that was still in my memory. And I paste, and I've got a brand new section. So copy the login screen section and paste it to create a brand new home section. Home screen start. Home screen start pg home and we'll put at the top home and i'll remove the data add back button i don't want to go back from the home screen back to the previous screen i don't want them to get out of my app that way when i drew the wireframe i had it that if you go to home it was a one way arrow you weren't able to get from home back to login. The way to get back to login is you have to go to options and then sign out. So remove, if you copied and pasted, remove the data add back button to your PG home. From your PG home. At the moment, there's no way to test this. There's no functionality that actually lets you come to the home screen. If you wanted to fully test it, you can create a very simple link, very simple button uh, from, from login to take you to home. That could be you, your fun task to do. I'm not going to do it. You could do it. To fully test it, I'm going to assume mine works. You shouldn't, your, you shouldn't assume yours works. Um, and uh, we'll take our second break at this point. You want to make sure these screens work so far. We're going to go back in and, and fill in the details, of course. They're not complete at all, but we're creating the basic skeleton of some of these screens. Uh, it's approximately 8.10-ish. We'll take a break for 10 minutes, so we'll, uh, we'll come back at 8.20, uh, and we'll go on.